Welcome back, viewers. It's I, your half-assed reporter, James Calm, and we have hazarded our way here to Midtown. We're gonna run into the new Anton Kern Gallery, and we're gonna take a look at Ellen Birkenblit. Stay tuned. probably covered many, maybe a dozen or so uh, previous exhibitions at uh, Anton Kern when they were down on, I believe it was 20th Street in Chelsea. And I guess they closed that gallery six or eight months ago. Maybe we'll splice in some some footage of what's happening there on the south side of 20th Street. Well, this was the original Anton Kern Gallery. I must have been here for about 12 or 15 years. I covered some wonderful shows there. Nicole Eisenman, Chris Martin, Bordolami. I did several shows. They're all closed now. Johan von Mises was there. And Zaire Smith. So uh, basically that whole south side of 20th Street here in Chelsea is gone. I wanted to make sure I came in and saw this exhibition by Ellen Birkenblit. Well, I was uh, scanning the art blogs and I happened to see a review by John Yao last weekend and I think the title was something like When is a major museum going to give Ellen Birkenblit an exhibition? And, well, that caught my eye. Maybe I'll post a link below. Uh, this is untitled 2017 oil and paint and oil stick on linen, 93 by 76. Well, as someone that's hung out in the New York art scene for about 30 years. I started seeing Ellen's work back in the East Village days. And, uh, well, she's one of the survivors. A lot of the, a lot of the people that uh, started careers there didn't make it. Some of them have gotten famous uh, Post posthumously. This is titled, I don't object if you call collect. And this is one of the interesting pieces. This is oil, paint, stick, and charcoal on calico. And uh, one of the things that Ellen is doing with this new body of work is that she's introduced um, sewn fabric. So she's got uh, different kind of prints, but also she's calling it calico. Now, I guess that could just be a, a general kind of a print on fabric, but I always thought it was plaid, maybe not. And, uh, well, these first three paintings kind of uh, give you a clue to reoccurring themes. So one of them is her portraits of horses. The other ones, the pieces on calico, are more abstract. And then she's got, uh, I guess what I would call fragments of bodies, body fragments. So you've got hands and feet 
but uh, they all have a very kind of obvious feminine quality. So we've got the, the fingernail polish and other little details. This is titled Tincture of Musk. Oil and paint stick on linen 76 by 88. And, uh, well, I would have to say that uh, a lot of these works are kind of uh, a step up in Ellen's scale. She's obviously doing some very ambitious pieces and uh, it's got a nice uh, sense of the scale. This is a little smaller. This is titled Scruffs 2016. Oil paint stick and charcoal on calico. And uh, this is one of the pieces where she really basically just kind of draws on the calico and uh, lets the calico come through as a major part of the, the composition. Also, she's got this little theme here, kind of a, I don't know, a spiky beaked little bird shape here that uh, she reuses again and again and has used it for, well, years. <laughs> and, uh, well, I've uh, commented recently that it seems that a lot of people are re-engaging with ideas that uh, a group of painters back in the mid-70s were dealing with. They were called the pattern decorative painters. And, uh, well, a lot of people thought decoration or decorative art was, was bad. But uh, at this particular period in the late 60s, early 70s, this also ended up becoming a, a uh, central point for feminist art, feminist painters. This is another horse portrait, Green Plume, 2016, 90 by 78. So I think it's interesting to note that a lot of these pieces are on dark grounds, black or maybe black mixed with burnt umber or ultramarine blue. And uh, she's done a nice job of making the surfaces nice and matte and then contrasting that with a little glossier or more thickly painted figurative areas. And I like the way that she's uh, brought in sort of little keynotes of color and compositional elements around the edges. I like this one. This is probably the smallest painting in the show. It's titled Jonesy, oil and paint stick on linen. This is only 18 by 26 inches. But a lot of this even carries over to the large pieces, which is kind of a uh, very loose, almost uh, sketchy or drawing-like quality that she approaches these with. And, uh, well, like I said, she's got dark backgrounds, but she's using very nice, uh, punchy, maybe some fluorescence, and, uh, and a lot of this green. Well, I was impressed with the, uh, the new gallery space that, uh, 
Anton Kern has had here. We're going to step upstairs in a couple of minutes and take a look at some of the other floors. This is untitled 2017. And this is a, again, a simple, singular subject. You've got an umbrella. It's almost like new image painting, but Ellen has brought in some nice, simple, but dynamic uh, elements in the background. Somehow I saw this and uh, thought of Matisse. It's titled Elif Bet. Seventy six by ninety four. That's about six and a half by eight feet. And uh, I think this is maybe one of the the best examples of the the hand paintings. She's done a lot of uh, working of these surfaces. There's a, a nice pedimetti. And yeah, the composition with this hand, about ready to grasp, I guess a little abstract flower art thinking that could be a part of a capsule, maybe some kind of drug. So we've got a couple more of the horse paintings, although these have been cut and reduced down to where they're basically just almost abstract forms. And of course there's a certain precedents for uh, horse painting. I think Susan Rothenberg made her name doing horse paintings back in the mid-70s. And uh, there's also a kind of a girly kitsch aspect to this, the, the idea that uh, maybe the horse is more, I don't know, more loving, more uh, deserving of, of love than any, any other kind of creature. As long as you don't have to stable them and feed them and uh, clean out the horse shit. Let's go upstairs. This is titled The Foot, 89 by 76 inches, oil and paint stick on linen. I was also thinking that uh, some of these simple, single element figure paintings kind of make me think of 
a whole series that Philip Guston did in the mid 60s when he was transitioning from his kind of brushy abstraction into his figurative and his Klansman series. He did a whole series that were just cups and hands and noses and feet. And this is kind of nice, the uh, central kind of grayed out form with a couple of shots of color around the edge and then the, the toenail. another hand painting witching hour 2017 63 and a half by 77 and a quarter Yeah, I think Ellen has got a nice, uh, nice sense of how she uses the edges of the canvas, kind of the cropping. So I've got that thumbnail coming right up to the edge there, and that's echoed by this other nail here, your index finger nail in the corner. And these little kind of scalloped edges on these forms, just enough uh, enough detail, enough attention to give you a kind of a, like I say, a feminist note there, a feminine note. This is untitled. Here we've just got a, uh, a little bar at the edge. It almost reads as a part of a letter, maybe a T on its side. And uh, well, this is interesting because the whole dark ground of this seemed to be tinted more towards a violet or a purple. And she's got a couple of uh, lines that she's scratched in. I think there's these uh, layers of ribbon that she's painted over. Untitled 2016, 75 by 66. There's your little beak bird form. I think I kind of uh, like these new fabric collage pieces more than some of the other work because these have got more more complex compositions and uh, I think it's even maybe more challenging to uh, stop at a certain point and uh, let the ground show through I kind of like the the ruggedness the almost an unfinished quality and uh, and the way that she's treating some of these lines and uh, the shapes that they delineate makes me think of uh, Diebenkorn This is titled V, or it could be 
Roman numeral five, I'm not sure. Well and paint stick on linen. I've got our little details, as I said, that kind of add these feminine notes and I guess somewhere in the press release they talk about there is no narrative to these pieces, but uh, I would disagree. I think if you are familiar with classic art, you know that uh, all of these hand gestures have significance and yes, what they're approaching, how they're approaching, all these things have a meaning, but I do, uh, I do like the, uh, kind of clotted surfaces, the, the worked over surfaces that she's built up here in the backgrounds, and, uh, black has become a very popular color these days, again. Oh, it's always popular here in New York. Untitled 2017. Oil and paint stick and charcoal on calico. I think the other interesting thing about the uh, the patterns is that they have a kind of a photographic sense, which brings in another kind of conceptual level of an image. And I think the uh, the only other person, the only other painter I know that uses this color of green and does it in as effective a way is uh, Ellsworth Kelly. So that's been a look at Ellen Birkenblitz's recent paintings. And we're gonna go upstairs. You're gonna get a bonus view now we're going to take a quick bonus run through Nicole Eisenman faces painted reliefs. Well, I'm not going to take time to give you the titles and the names and the mediums of all these because there are a lot of them, but uh, I'll make a few comments and we'll slide down the wall. Uh, I guess it was maybe a year and a half, two years ago that uh, Nicole had a very highly regarded exhibition at Anton Kern and Chelsea and uh, she had a project in the back room where she was showing some of her ceramics. Oh, well this makes it easy. These are all untitled. Cast aluminum. Okay, so although they might look like ceramic plates or something, these are cast aluminum. At that point, she was showing little still life tableaus that she had made with ceramics. And, uh, well, I think Nicole just got a general, uh, very eclectic and very creative sense of materials and subject matter.
Some of these look like uh, maybe she's taken a piece of styrofoam that's been sitting around the studio, uh, chopped it up, poured various things on it. Uh, I guess I feel better about these being cast aluminum. I was going to say a lot of uh, ceramic purists would get all fatutzed if they saw work that had been painted. You know, anything that's not glazed is considered unpure. So this is maybe the central piece. I think this is a good example of uh, Nicole's humor of kind of a uh, strange pod-like head and uh, well, the eyes and nose have been covered with clops of stuff. And she's got a bracelet and a wristwatch she has attached. Some of these could be masks. This is a nice, small little piece. Uh, so they're not only interesting uh, as sculptural forms, but I think Nicole's got a great uh, sense of uh, the painted sculpture. I like this one. Positive and negative forms here. This made me think of Homer Simpson and maybe some of Joyce Pinsato's paintings. Oh, these are not. Nicole's drawings. These are by David Shrigley. They're all pencil on paper. 29 and 3 quarters by 22 inches. And I think they're all titled with a little text there on the bottom. I break your stick in order to help you. I uh, saw a couple of these and uh, thought of early David Hockney. And uh, yeah, the little scribbly, squirrely background is reminiscent of Cy Twombly. I drew her, she drew me.
So this has been James Com, and we've just walked through a couple of shows by Ellen Birkenblit, Nicole Eisenman, and David Shrigley. Here at the new Anton Kern Gallery. 16 East 55th Street in Midtown. You can leave your comments, critiques below if you'd like. And help me here, folks. Thank you, Kate. Evan Sherman Big Band. Whoa, thank you, thank you.